Well, hello everyone. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Um, I'm going to go over our conjunctions lesson and our quick practice today. And we are focusing on conjunctions because that is a unit one skill that we still haven't mastered. So we're going to go back and work on that. And so we're going to focus on being to identify what a conjunction is and that it's functioning properly and that it makes sense in that sentence. So, Ms. Welch is going to present this for us and we're gonna get rolling. All right. All right, conjunctions. A conjunction ties together parts of a sentence and clarifies the relationship between ideas or events. Conjunctions are words like or, and, stuff that links two ideas together, like Kenny and Kelly, um, Joe or Jeff, those linking words. There are several types of conjunctions, but we're gonna be focusing on two. We're gonna be focusing on coordinating conjunctions and subordinate conjunctions. Coordinating conjunctions, are words such as and or but, and that they connect words, phrases, and clauses of equal importance. So you would use words like and and but to connect things that are equal importance, meaning you can connect a name with a name, but not like a name and a completely different thought. So it has to, they have to match what's going on either side. Um, all of these together are commonly referred to as fanboys. And because they're meant to link ideas together, they can never start a sentence. Uh, you should never start a sentence trying to link it to another sentence because each sentence is supposed to be a completely brand new thought. These are all of our coordinating conjunctions are fanboys. So for, and that explains the reason or purpose. So if you're using for as a coordinating conjunction, takes place of the word because. So I was late for my car ran out of gas. That is, I could put the word because in there and that sentence would be the same thing. And is like the plus symbol. It just adds one thing to another. Kelly and Kenny went to prom. So those two people are being connected as the subject of that sentence, nor that's for my sassy pants. It's one of my favorite words because it, when it means by presents a negative alternative, it means neither did this. So Shelly nor Tommy did their homework. So we're saying Shelly didn't do her homework and Tommy didn't do it either. You can also use it to link two thoughts like I will not do my homework nor will I ask for help. That means I'm not going to do either of those things, but would present a contrasting idea. So, for example, Miss Welch is very short, but she can jump really high. That presents a contrasting idea because I'm really, really short. So it's surprising, contrasting that I can jump really high in the air. Or presents that choice. It means one or the other. So she could have coffee or water. I have to make a choice between them. And as you know, Ms. Welch will always choose the coffee. Yet it works almost exactly identical to but. You could use them almost pretty much interchangeably. She was hungry, comma, yet she didn't get up to see what food was in the house, period. So one would think if you're hungry, you'd get up in front of me. But no, she's hungry, but she stayed sitting right down. So indicates effect, result, or consequence. So is another one of those like cause and effect type ideas. So I was hungry, so I walked across the room to get the Cheetos. My mom was tired, so she went to bed early. It has to like, it, it gives like a reason or a effect or a consequence of some sort. And then this is an example of all of these used in a sentence. And these sentences are all about pizza. 
because as you know, as Ms. Welch is a tried and true New Yorker, I love pizza. So these are all of my examples about pizza and they're all functioning correctly in these sentences. Right. Then we have subordinate conjunctions. So what provides a necessary transition between two ideas in a sentence, but <clears throat> this subordinate conjunction functions a little differently than a coordinate conjunction. It does still indicate a time, place, or cause and effect relationship. And these are some example subordinate conjunctions. The problem with subordinate conjunctions is if you put one in the beginning of your clause, it automatically makes it dependent or not a complete thought. Because this word subordinate up here, subordinate kind of means to make below or to be below something. So it's being sub becoming subordinate to the independent clause. It needs the independent clause attached to it to make sense. It doesn't make sense on its own because of that subordinating conjunction. <clears throat> and in here we have just this visual <clears throat> for you guys to kind of look at. So this is how to identify them. So they're used to join complete thoughts in the sentence similar to a coordinating conjunction. And they can go in the middle but sometimes they can go in the front, like we see over here. Like they said, they can be found in the beginning or the middle of a sentence. And they use the term swabby um, to just give you an example of those really common subordinating conjunctions. So since indicates, oh, I hope you all know the answer to this, time, since indicates time, when also would indicate time, after time, because cause and effect and if would be similar as well. Oh, but since indicates time, remember all of that, everyone. All right, and that is the end of our notes. So after you've concluded this, you have an assignment right here um, in Schoology. And so what that assignment is, is now that you've got that lesson, those notes, you're gonna do this conventions quick practice assignment. All right, this is located right here in Schoology. Um, obviously nobody's turned it in yet. I'm all waiting for you lovely friends to turn it in. Um, we're going to open it up. And here's what I need you to do. So in section A, so guys, and also don't forget, if you forget stuff or need help too, you have notes right up here. I'm always telling you guys to look at and then you are always like, oh, I didn't even know that that was up there. I didn't even read that. Oh my God, that makes it so much easier. Well, remember, it's just right here. So this first one, it wants you to underline the conjunctions in these sentences. And then underneath, you're going to label, is it a coordinating conjunction or a subordinating conjunction? So using our swabbies and our fanboys, we're going to take a look. <laughs> Uh, Sigrid Scully, 84, signed up for a tech class because she was struggling to stay connected with a far flung family. Well, I know because is one of our swabbies. So I'm going to go ahead and just highlight that. And then right down below here, I'm going to write subordinating. That's because as we saw in our notes, uh, because is a swabby and that is a subordinating conjunction. All right, and that's how you would complete section A. We have section B. So in this, you have to take one of those conjunctions that we've just gone over, one of our swabbies, one of our fanboys, and connect these together. So you'd have to pick a conjunction and just create a new sentence out of these two complete sentences. And with that, my ladies and gentlemen, I think we have it. All right, that is your Tuesday grammar lesson. Have a great day. And then make sure you get tomorrow's assignment done in no red ink. Bye-bye now.